I'm John Batchelor, Larry Kudlow, CNBC and Kudlow Radio on the weekend, and we're joined by our colleague Jennifer Rubin of the Washington Post. The center of attention today and for days to come is Mrs. Clinton, former Secretary of State, former Senator from New York, former First Lady. This particular instance is about emails, and I deleted them, and the... Uh, decisions by the Secretary of State about her pro- her personal and public account when she was Secretary of State. However, the demonstration today also reminded all of us who went through the Clinton years in the 20th century that Mrs. Clinton is imperious. And the imperiousness is so taken for granted that you puzzle sometimes whether on purpose she's not absolutely agile. Uh, Jennifer, I welcome you because Larry at the top of the show, forgive me Larry for characterizing what you said, but you believe that Mrs. Clinton was looking down and didn't look sharp. Do I say that correctly, Larry? She just looked like a woman that wasn't telling the truth and wasn't having a good time. And Jennifer, that connects with your observations. She did not look comfortable on stage as if she was this imperial figure. Yes, she looked sort of annoyed to be there. Why does she have to answer all these questions? Why is her judgment being questioned? Why don't they just trust her, for goodness sakes? Um, And she kind of read off what looked to be talking points. And in fact, when the office of Hillary Clinton sent out um, questions and answers, a lot of them seemed to be pretty close to verbatim uh, to what she said in the, uh, in the, the verbal part of her presentation. So she didn't look comfortable, um, and she didn't have any answer that any sort of, you know, conscious person who doesn't get paid for her would absolutely accept on any level. It's just bizarre. And you wonder, does she believe it? Does she understand how badly she's come across? You know, I've looked at some of the coverage, even from our friends at places like MSNBC and New York Times. Really, no one is buying this. Um, And you do wonder, how did they get her off the stage, or are they just stuck with her for the duration? You know, Jen, none of it adds up. I mean, that's the really interesting thing. It just doesn't add up. I mean, the the original server thing she said was in there because of um, President Clinton, who (laughs) we learned later from Clinton's (laughs) office. Yes. He's written two emails in his whole life and not to her. I mean, that's, that's just one of the more amusing parts. But let me ask you this. So she stonewalled. She's not letting anybody in right. to examine the um, however many outstanding emails there are. Um, all right, trust me, nobody trusts her. How much of this do you think is linked to Benghazi and the hearings about Benghazi? I don't know, but I wonder how much is linked to the other brewing scandal that kind of got overshadowed temporarily by this scandal, and that is her receipt of foreign monies from foreign governments while she was Secretary of State. That money was ostensibly going into her foundation, but it was a foundation over which she and her husband and her daughter had almost absolute control. Was she soliciting money from the Saudis for her foundation while she was in office? I mean, it is really, you know, a question not only of what she was doing ostensibly for the American people, people, but what she was doing for herself while holding office on behalf of the American people. And I wonder if these two really shocking incidents, um, one, the private email, um, and secondly, uh, a foundation which allows foreign governments to pay millions of dollars to someone that they would hope would be president of the United States one day, whether these two aren't linked, and the answer is in those emails and in that server that was set up at her home. So, you know, it's hard to tell what it is that she is so defensive about, or whether just on principle, the Clintons never tell anything and never let anybody inside. Um, We just don't know, and that's kind of the point. How do we know anything about what she's done? How do we know anything she's saying? We're we're looking at what you're I think, Jennifer, you're pointing to the fact that we're looking at stonewalling. And the stonewalling was a Clinton style in the 20th century, and it worked. They were very successful at it. Although today, I thought the stonewall... I thought the stonewall indicated that this is what the campaign's going to be like. Well, we can't expect anything different. You know, the the leopard doesn't change her spots. And I do think she has one 
quality that none of us really have that makes stonewalling so effective for her. She is without shame. Not very many people could get up there and say those words and say, well, in retrospect, maybe I shouldn't have made it so convenient for myself. And, oh, you just have to take my word for it. Any other human being on the planet would be embarrassed to say that or would look, you know, sheepish or would apologize. She has no problem whatsoever. This is how they operate. And really, to be a really good stonewaller, you have to disbelieve that there's anything that's been done that's incorrect, that's wrong on any level. And boy, does she believe she is above reproach, obviously. Um, you know, it was interesting at the beginning of the uh, questioning when someone asked her about receipt of monies from Arab oil sheikdoms that abuse women terribly. Her response was, we do wonderful work at the foundation. Right. Wasn't that telling? None of her behavior is at issue. It's just because she's so good and so wonderful that we just, she's beyond reproach. Uh, you know, it was a very telling moment. I, I was um, watching this computer geek on TV, and I say that with great affection. I love yes. computer geeks. Um, and, you know, she says, uh, I deleted all these emails like the dog ate my homework. <laughs> he reminds us that you can't delete anything now. It's out there in some cloud or some server or some hard drive. That stuff doesn't go away. Now, his second point was that he Googled the server, and the server is not in Chappaqua. This guy says that the Google search, uh, you know, from the air, turned up a server in New York City in what they called an official building. Now, I don't get any of that. We're all talking about Chappaqua, Westchester County. How do you maintain an infrastructure there? I don't think it's there. I think it's in New York City, and I can't figure out... There was a statement put out today, Larry, by Mrs. Clinton's attorneys, we presume, but it was clarifying, and it very clearly indicated that the server that she used is in the Chappaqua estate. They right. said that today, and she said, my server is private. Well, this guy completely disagrees I with that. understand that there's confusion here, and there will remain confusion, because we didn't get any clarity, even from the clarifying document that came later. Yes. There, there's fog, there's fog of, uh, there, it's fog of computer talk. And you, you also, you ask, it. look, if the server's in New York City in an official building, who's paying for that? Right. That's another thing. No, Jen. there's nothing but questions it. here, which is why I'm pointing to this imperiousness. Jennifer, I want to press this. Yes. Uh, earlier today, Larry and I were exchanging emails as we prepared for the show, and I casually said, get used to it. January 2025 is when she leaves the stage. And Larry write, wrote back quickly, 2025 question mark. What are you talking about, John? You, uh, you get it, don't you, Jennifer? Yes. Uh, <laughs> you know, what can I say? Um, there, it's, it's our life, Jennifer. Yeah, I know. What can I say? I, you know, at some level, you wonder, does the American people ever get tired of this? Does the press get tired of carrying her water? At some point, are people going to wake up? And I don't know the answer to that. Democrats, unlike Republicans, tend to take direction very well from their leaders. You know, if told to spin, they will spin. Um, they're not ornery. They don't fight amongst themselves the way Republicans do. So it's very possible that they will circle the wagons with this woman, and she will run the type of campaign the Clintons always run, which is, okay, she's bad, but now she's going to make the other person look like a monster. Uh, and they run these mean, slashing, uh, horrible campaigns against whoever gets in their way and they destroy the other person and that's how they get into power. So it is conceivable that she makes it, uh, I suppose. Um, I'd like to think the American people are on to her. I'd like to think that people have gotten sick of this sort of behavior, even Democrats, but we don't know. Uh, you know, she doesn't show any signs right now of uh, getting off of her uh, presidential bandwagon. Well, I'll say one thing. Uh, if we're going to have 16 years Eight in Obama, eight of Hillary, which I, I'm, I'm trying to compartmentalize. I can't even deal with it. But uh, the, the Republicans had better, Jen, they had better put up a good, solid, pro-growth, strong defense, and big tent inclusionary campaign in 2016. Quite oh, unlike to. recent campaigns. Uh, they'll, or they'll have another chance in 2020. Jennifer Rubin from the Washington Post, Larry Kudlow, CNBC, and Kudlow Radio on the weekend. I'm John Batchelor.